we have this um, kind of a waterfall reservoir that's happening there and it's a little brighter in the center and you'll notice I'm starting to go a little bit thicker now with the pastels um, because I'm using professional pastels I want to be very careful with the pastel dust because some of these have like cadmium pigments and they're not good to breathe so one of the things that I do a little side note is once it starts to get thick I'll actually tap this down and that lets my pastel dust run down I have something under here to catch the pastel dust aluminum foil like a double folded strip of aluminum foil makes a great pastel dust catcher and if you don't have any of that at least you can put some plastic down on the floor an old plastic um, trash bag is fine tape it down and then you don't have to worry about the pastel dust getting everywhere all right, so I have those colors. I do think I'm going to come in with a few of these lighter points. Just go ahead and suggest a little bit of this. And again, there's a little reflection. And you just want to kind of suggest, again, what is happening in the water with what is happening above. I don't like to use a lot of black, but it's important to me uh, to show the darks at this point. And for the sake of the video and a, a quick impression, I have my dark. It's not quite black. It's actually a deep dark brown. And the main reason is I want to really define where my darks are. When I'm doing pastel paintings, I go back and forth from the lights and the darks. That really helps. And I'm actually very nearsighted, so I take my glasses off often while I'm working so I can really get an impression of it as opposed to seeing every little detail because that, that defeats the purpose, especially at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is just kind of use the edge here. And I'm just suggesting... And you can tell that the pastel is starting to thicken up. There's a lot of green in here, but I'm just going to do a little drag. That's one of the great things about these hand-rolled pastels, the, the Unison and um, you know Schmincke and the Sennelier. They're all great colors, but these Unison work great because I can actually just drag a little bit and get that little tiny bit of pigment to come off. And I'm not going to stress that this may not look exactly like it does in the picture because I'm not going to show my picture when I'm showing the painting. And you can start to see I'm playing light against dark, dark against light. I'm doing edges. So that really helps when I'm pastel painting to really define that edge. And again, I'm not coming in and doing an outline. It is very important when you're working with pastel to not just draw these really outlined, big, bold marks, unless that's your style. Uh, try to do edges instead, or just barely suggest with a little pastel. Now, in the event you end up messing something up, you can actually use a chamois cloth and try to pick up carefully uh, the pastel underneath that works. If I'm using the uh, Richeson board and it's gator foam, I've actually rinsed off all of the pastel before and that works well too. Um, baby wipes work great and of course having a smock. All right, now I'm going to go into some different greens here. Um, actually, that is very close to the same. A little bit brighter. So what I want to do is now suggest, you can see how that came up. I'm going to bring that down here. And again, I don't want it to all look the same, but I like having the balance here. Um, and there's actually little bit I'm just gonna again drag across because even though right now that doesn't look like water when I get all of my pastel on the surface you'll just have a little bit of that green peeking through and it works really great there's a little bit of green coming out of that opening and you also like I said want to vary your marks I'm actually trying now to suggest some of these plants 
So I want to, instead of using it on its side or trying to delineate everything, just trying to suggest a different type of a plant here. I'm going to go ahead and block this in just a little bit more. And I wanted to bring in more of the red building because I was bringing in the green. So it's important to have both of those. And I'm not sure if I'm going to suggest all of this tree here. I'll do a little bit. And you can see how that really dulled down versus here. Because red and green are complementary colors, so that dulled this green down. Whereas here, the greens stand out a little bit more because they're not against the complementary color. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with color theory, you need to do some reading, take a class, because it's so important in painting and much of art to understand color theory, but you've got the basic colors, you have um, split complements, you have warm and cool, um, tints and shades. There's all these things with color, and once you get an understanding, your painting is better, and it keeps getting better and better the better your understanding. And I want to, again, have some of the green in here. I've lost that. Okay, now at this point, um, I have these three light areas. And what I want to do is bring in a little more definition of this gray wall. And then I'm going to go into the sky and water. But this, this wall, I really want to be a little bit more defined here as I'm going along. And I'm using this broken line. Again, vary in the marks. And I'm not worried about showing everything in that wall, but I want to have a basic understanding so it looks more convincing to the viewer. And again, everything, I have the reflection coming right down. Okay, and need some gray. Now, that almost obliterated that, which is okay, but it starts to bring your focus into the center as opposed to going off the side. And another cool thing about pastels is you can just drag the soft pastels. You can pick up another color underneath and the better your pastel surface is, the more tooth it has, the better you can do this. All right. Now, I think I'm going to pop in a little bit more blue here. I'm just going to go ahead and add this in. Now, I like the pastel paper to show through. I really like the color. But there are two times that I prefer there to be no paper showing at all. One of those is when I'm doing sky, and the other one is when I'm doing skin, because you don't want it to look so splotchy. So I want to make sure there's a really thick layer of pastel on this. If I were to do any blending, some people use a, a stump, some people use their finger. You want to make sure before you blend there's a lot of pastel on the surface. So you're pushing the pastel around, and you want to make sure that your hands are clean and dry and that you keep cleaning and drying them off. Otherwise, you're going to muddy it up. If your hands are dirty, you have the oil on them, the other pastel, and it just is going to make a muddy mess. So if you're doing blending, make sure there's a lot of pastel on the surface. Make sure your hands are clean and dry, or the tool is clean when you're doing this. <laughs> 